let's talk to Lindsay for a second, calling in from Clever Orangutans, uh, who is a theist who's having a hard time with the evolution of humans and would like some clarification. Lindsay, you are on the line with Forrest and only Forrest. How are you doing today? Howdy, howdy. I'm pretty good. So, yeah, um, the other caller made me think about other things um, and would, but I'll get to that later. I called a little while ago and talked about the evolution of horseshoe crabs, and that's where you learned that horseshoe crabs are not crabs. They are more related to spiders. I'm still still excited about that. Yeah, exactly. So, with the evolutionary theory that we, our common ancestor, died out, and we have apes and humans, and we are directly linked to that millions and millions of years ago, Mm. then, okay, I get that, I guess. It's a little bit hard, because I was raised... Christian, and so it's like God created everything, and that was my answer for why things were the way they were. Anyway, deconstructed uh, the Old Testament, basically thinking like, oh yeah, these are myths that tell kids, like that tell people how it worked, just like mm. how we used to think that uh, um, bowling balls were made of like the, the 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 old myth of like oh yeah the giants are in the sky and they're making thunder because they're rolling their bowling pins right right so anyway right. um but I still have like dog I guess maybe not dogmatic thinking but like diminutive thinking I guess. And where I, like, for example, with the keyhole limpet, they have eyes, but it's not, quote unquote, as good as our eyes, but it works for the niche that they're in. So, like, how do I rephrase that and just say, like, they work well for the the state they're in? Like, nothing, like, we are not diminutive over either people or animals. Like, that's white supremacy and stuff like that. And I probably have a little bit of a remnant of that because it happens. Um, but yeah, just in general, like how do I get the dogmatic thinking or curtail it, I guess. So uh, let's see here. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so this is the way Darwin put it about the eyes in particular. You're probably familiar with this quote. To suppose that the eye... Uh, uh, with all of its inimitable contrivances for adjusting the focus, blah, 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 could have been formed by natural selection, seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. Have you ever heard that quote before? Mm-hmm, yeah. And then it yep. goes on to say, um, so a- even though I don't know, I, I still understand the process. Yeah. Exactly. And so he says, yet... Reason tells me that if numerous gradations from a simple and imperfect eye to one complex and perfect can be shown to exist, each grade being useful to its possessor, as is certainly the case. If further variation, uh, if the eye ever varies and variations can be inherited, as likewise certainly is the case, as if, if, if these variations should be useful to any animal under changing conditions of life, the difficulty in believing that a perfect and complex eye could be formed by natural selection, though insuperable by our imagination, cannot be considered real and so this what he the way he says it is just that it is useful to its bearer it's something that is useful to that animal that has it and we see that a lot when we look at at different things like you know take for example you know pick your favorite fish right the wing the, the fins that it has are useful for what it does and the way that it's very often said when we we talk about this is we'll say like, look, this thing's claws are perfectly designed for ripping flesh, right? Or this Mm -hmm. thing's tail is perfectly designed for balance. And that's just slipping in that kind of dogmatic thinking. But you could just easily say this thing has, you know, uh, uh, long toes that are perfectly adapted for hanging on to branches. And that is a, that's the way you should be saying. So if you're talking about anything like that, just change out the word for it's it's well adapted for this 
you can say exactly how you were saying it. This works for this species. It's exactly what this species needs. And if the environment changes, so will this trait. Um, mm -hmm. It's just important to remember that a lot of the time we're talking biology, it is really relative. If we say something is, is yeah. beneficial, laterious, totally relative statement, depending on the conditions that that environment or the environment that that organism was in. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Do you have a specific thing you want to try to dig into? Oh, you're fine. I appreciate that. Um, I guess the when I was younger, we used to sing this song like God's fingerprints are everywhere, just to show how much yeah. he cares. And then he had fun with the platypus. How mm -hmm. did the platypus if I if I chalk in okay? It's evolved. How, like, didn't scientists think that the platypus was like a mistake or something at first? Because it couldn't, like, I thought it was they couldn't hoax. imagine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. So how yeah, did they, we figure they, out the like, platypus, hey, you, like, you evolved with you venom? We, that, that's the thing that I was like, wait, and it has venom? What? Yeah. I guess I Not can the understand the other stuff. Either. Yeah, we have we have venomous. There's a slow loris is the only venomous primate. Think about that. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, yeah, so so there's a couple of things there. Um, and yeah, you're right. They, you know, early, early zoologists, when somebody brought in a platypus, they thought it was a joke. They're like, you just fucking sewed a duck bill onto a beaver, you idiot. What are you doing? Um, yeah, but, exactly. Uh, what's, cool there, what's what's important, what makes it less scary, what demystifies this guy quite yeah, a bit exactly. is to look at its relationship to other mammals. So mm -hmm. 220 million years ago, right? All mammals are monotreme. All mammals lay eggs. All mammals are like the platypus in a lot more ways than, than, than you'd imagine. Um, the platypus in a lot of ways is this ancestral state. Um, and mm -hmm. then all these other mammals that we have today broke off and went in other directions. So you've got now the platypus and the echidna are the only, plat anim uh, the only mammals that still lay eggs. They have milk patches rather than nipples. Like these are like, really really ancestral basal mammals but that mm -hmm. means that all the other mammals you can think about evolutionarily speaking every lion koala cheetah human sloth you name it they're the weirdos they're the strange mm -hmm. ones because they're the ones out mm -hmm. here giving live birth shit and if you yeah, really want to get weird about it if you really want to get weird about it compare them to marsupials because kangaroos wallabies kangaroos, and all these right? other marsupials. Okay, yep. yeah yeah marsupials are as weird to eutherians like you and me as they are with fucking mon as monotremes are to either one of us these are three distinctive pathways for us to give birth do we do it by eggs or do we carry the baby to term or do we shit out a fucking half form fetus jelly bean that has to crawl into a <laughs> pouch and attach to a nipple so hard that if you tried to remove it, you'd rip its skull out of its head. What is that? What does that oh mean? Goodness, I, didn't, like, so, I, didn't, it's crazy. I didn't realize that about the hand. Oh goodness gracious. No wonder the mothers it's kick horrific. so hard. It's <laughs> horrific, Lindsay. And you know what else? fucking what's crazy cool about kangaroos they can pause their pregnancy if they're pregnant and they get into a stressful situation they don't abort the baby they can just put a pause on it and it just stops development right there and that thing just lives for as many months as it needs to live in that exact developmental stage until they are ready to continue developing their young neat as fuck why didn't Lord, we, i wish we could do that why, it's yeah, why didn't so we get cool. that Right. Like, I don't even want to have you, children. Because and we I'm were like, made in what? God's <laughs> image, guys. Those were made yes, in, we were made in God's image. image. In God's <laughs> Thank asshole. you. There's my contribution so, for like, this conversation. Yeah. Right? Butterflies can taste with their feet. But like that's that what I'm saying yeah. is like there's <laughs> when, me too. When you look special. at any one of these things, when you look at any one of these traits as compared to humans. It sounds wild and nutty and totally hard to explain and justify. But when you compare it to the rest of the mm -hmm. animal kingdom, it's just another weird fucking thing that animals do. And when you compare yeah, it to the rest yeah. of life, it's it's mundane. And so it's really important when you're looking at evolution, um, especially coming from like a, a theistic perspective or like coming from leaving a Christian narrative and coming into a scientific one. Um, 
-hmm. it's really important to be very, very careful that you don't do what we call teleology or orthogenesis, where like evolution has like this hierarchy or this goal. You haven't done that in this call. Right. It's super common. And and also right. that you no. don't don't compare stuff to humans and expect to get a clean answer. It just this is not right. You've got to look at every individual species in the context of its own evolutionary story. Of it, yes, and when you yes. do that, okay. nothing is nothing is any weirder than humans are. Gotcha. Okay. You think they just fell out of coconut tree? <laughs> Coconuts. Yeah. Why are they anyway, so hard to the show? Yeah. Um, oh, it's because the they, 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 they live in an island environment and they're going to get saturated and so they don't need a... Yeah, it's, 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 oh, yeah, it's, there's a lot nice. there. There's a lot there. Go on. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have ADHD, and I'm just like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and right. all my other questions. But uh, anyway, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so with the other caller, Wayne, who was transphobic, I was just wondering then, would he believe disabled people are disabled? If they have the natural Again. ability to walk and just can't suffer whatever reason right what is that yeah no, he doesn't believe in adjectives yeah right? he also doesn't believe in adjectives. <laughs> <It's a whole laughs> i mean Man. i i i i'm trying not to be um let's see dehumanizing um but that's a very odd it's an odd uh if you don't believe in adjectives it's a very odd way of looking at the world that's so. That's the thing about transphobes, though. They just genuinely don't think about anything that they say. And then when you call them out on it, they get all pissy and emotional and claim that you are relying on emotion because that's what they do. And it's just it's it's like talking to fucking when I do videos about answers in Genesis and like they claim that science yes. is dogmatic. They're so used. To, oh, God, they're God. so used to dogmatic I'm... thinking that they assume everybody else does that. Transphobes are so used to stupid, thoughtless, emotional reasoning. They assume everybody else does it too, and then they judge us for it. It sucks. Oh man, anyway, we just uh, need more nuance, and I don't know where to get it. I don't know how to. Yeah, welcome to, to the internet. We don't get that here. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't get nuance here on the internet. Okay. No, we do not. I just mentioned conversation. Lindsay, it's, it's... <laughs> right. Uh, it's been real. Um, I really appreciate you calling in and asking questions. You've got great questions and I love it. So feel free to call us again sometime. If you have any more science stuff that you want to talk about. Okay. Thank you very much. Take okay, care, Lindsay. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. I'm Jimmy Snow. I'm the executive producer of The Line. And at night, I sneak into Matt Dillahunty's house and I trade his cereals for other cereals. He comes out and he's like, wait, I, these are cereals I buy, but I swear I had different cereals. Anyway, would you like to support this channel or any specific show? You can do so over on Patreon or in channel memberships. There are special tiers for special shows or for the channel at large, and it helps us expand programming as well as hopefully very soon launch it in podcast form. Now, also, if you'd like to support, you can like, you can subscribe, you can leave a comment or a super thanks, which is a special highlighted comment that you pay for. Those are fun. And, you know, Screw the algorithm. Go check out something over here, I suppose. Boy, I hope I can still put those icons there, because if I can't, this is going to look really stupid. I'm going to go buy some Cocoa Puffs and switch out Matt's mini-wheats now. <laughs>